from CFOX Radio. Hello, Roger. Hello, Rick. How are you? Very good. How are things with me? Just great, Rog. Uh, I hope the people will believe that what's happening here because uh, my heart is still in my mouth after what you told me. I could imagine. Uh, Rog, uh, you're in the hotel room. Well, oh, you tell the folks where you are. Yeah, well, I'm in the corner of the hotel. I'm in room 1742 here in Montreal. And as everyone is probably aware, John Lennon has been here since Tuesday, and we have been with him since Tuesday, broadcasting his message to Montreal. And uh, I've been his sort of head PR man, unpaid, very dedicated, uh, passing this on to other stations uh, across North America since he's unable to get into the States at the moment. Yes. And uh, he has been talking with stations from uh, Los Angeles and San Francisco to Boston and New York. And I thought people in Sydney would like to hear what John Lennon is about. I, I'm sure they would like to hear it from that. Of John Lennon. I would about. most definitely like to run. Rick, can you hold the line a second? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, any minute now, we're going to speak to John Lennon in Montreal. Hi, Rick. Hello, how are you? Is that, I'm fine, how are you? Is that John Lennon? Yeah. How are you, John? It's good to talk to you. It's good to talk to you, Rick. Well, John, other than everything else that's happening, how are you enjoying Canada? It's a beautiful place, beautiful people, you know. I'm really glad you're enjoying it. Yeah. And it's a marvelous thing for you and I to be talking on the, the phone here because I had never dreamt that all the news that I've been getting about you that I'd ever get a chance to talk you about it personally, and uh, I, I've got some questions about the whole thing too. Right, let's go. Right. Well, how are things going so far? I mean, your your whole principle and uh, point of being there uh, has it proven uh, any particular points that you wanted it to prove so far? Well, it's proved that uh, people's minds are open to suggest the peace, you know, because uh, that's what we're trying to do is to sell peace like a soap, like you sell soap, like the establishment sell anything, and we're hoping to sell peace to everybody, you know, and make it sort of get them to think peace and be peace and want peace. If you want it enough, we think you can get it. I believe that too, John. Uh, you did make a remark to newsmen uh, the other day about uh, buying and selling peace as a commodable product. Uh, can you go into that just a little deeper, uh, a little uh, uh, more elaborately? Well, it's just the fact that, uh, I mean, big businesses can sell almost anything if they keep plugging it and keep with sending it and selling it until people want the product. But all we're suggesting is the people who have any ideas about peace is to keep it in front of the public eye, sell it until so, so people are made aware that they can have peace, and that peace, people are able to get peace, and the governments do things when people express a mass opinion. I see. Well, John, deep down, do you believe that uh, you will see the day in your life when uh, the world will be at peace, when, uh, when men will be living uh, hand in hand with uh, uh, the different races, the blacks, the whites, the yellows? So do you think that the day will come in your lifespan that you'll see this? I certainly do, you know, because uh, nobody sustained the peace campaign. Everybody gives up after a bit or something happens, you know. But we're hoping to get the ball rolling so big that nobody can stop it. There's no alternative. Peace is the only answer. And if we all work together and think about it and keep working at it and keep plugging it and people keep doing events like we're doing or doing thinking of their own ideas and really working for it, stop intellectualizing about it, we can get it. Mm-hmm. Well, John, uh, getting away from uh, the crusade that you're on right now, having you on the phone and uh, having such a world-famous personality uh, on the line, I'd like to ask you other questions about the Beatles themselves. I'm sure that uh, all the other disc jockeys you've been talking to have been uh, breaking away from your crusade to ask you the same type of questions. Yeah, sure, but sure. How about the other fellows? Uh, what are they doing right now? Uh, well, uh, we just finished an album, and we're halfway through a new one, so we decided to take a break. And I decided to do this, and I think Ringo's still filming, or I think he might be on holiday. I know Paul's driving your, around Europe right now, I heard about it. Mm-hmm. I think George is still working, producing people, you know. Mm-hmm. I've just completed reading the book, uh, John, uh, the story of the Beatles. I can't remember who wrote it, but it was uh, uh, all about your dealings with the guru and whatnot. How do you feel about that now? Well, I had a good time in India, and uh, I was taught how to meditate, and... I had three months of peace and quiet, and I feel very fine about it, you know? Well, I was thinking more of when uh, the guru went on tour with the Beach Boys. Uh, he kind of commercialized his whole uh, principle, and uh, apparently, according to the book, the Beatles weren't exactly interested in commercializing transcendental meditation. It was for those who really believed in it. How do you feel about that? Oh, so we just said to it, we disagreed with uh, some of Maharishi's followers' ideas on how to promote things, you know? And we said that the, for him to go on the beach where his soul would be a disaster. Mm-hmm. And it turned out that way. Well, John, uh, how do the other Beatles feel about your crusade? They're behind me in spirit, you know? And uh, 
Ringo was interviewed by the press in New York the other day and he said some very good things about it. I can't remember exactly what, but he indicated that he, he was sort of, he said, God bless John and Yoko for doing it and uh, that's very decent of it. Well, John, it's an extreme pleasure to talk to you, and I hope that people will rally around your crusade and, uh, and go along with uh, what you have to say. I believe that you're doing a good thing. And, uh, John, I, I must say it's been an extreme pleasure to talk to you, and uh, I'm sure the folks here in Sydney have enjoyed it as well. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Goodbye, Sydney. Okay, thank you very much, John. Okay, okay. peace to you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. John Lennon from the Beatles sings, Don't Let Me Down. Don't